Hey, David, it's Matt Reardon. Um, please give me a call at your soonest convenience. It's uh, 3.15 on Tuesday the 1st. Um, I'm needing a emergency. I'm wanting an emergency board meeting to convene with the County Board of Supervisors. All I'm asking for is for a remote Zoom meeting because we are quickly approaching the election and there are serious accusations and grievances that are in play going right up to it <coughs> that I would like addressed. Um, I would like to bring to the county supervisor's attention. I know I've already brought it to David Ricards and um, you know, I just, I, I think the best thing, honestly, that the county can do at this point is to not refuse me my right under the First Amendment to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And I think that being that everything stemmed in the county, that these supervisors, the board of supervisors certainly has an obligation to hear and assess the seriousness of this, especially in the week leading up to the election. Um, if, if I can't even get that, um, then I'm going to have no choice but to file a federal complaint and seeking a, uh, a, a stay to the upcoming election until a fair and formal investigation has been conducted. I don't think that's asking too much. I have worn a fake label given to me by the county over the past four years now. I've lost three houses and my kids that were under five that had to deal with the three moves certainly were affected. So not only has this disenfranchised me, but it's disenfranchised my, my children. And it's just adding insult to injury, refusing to look at the facts. 662-812-1613. 662-812-1613. Thanks, David. Mr. O'Donnell, Matt Reardon. I had just missed your call whenever you called. I'm doing all right. How you doing? Uh, not, not too bad, really. Coming back on the holiday, good. Yeah, um, well, I mean, not a whole lot, not a whole lot to it now. I got three, three kids that, um, you know, at, t- at times, well, it's actually four. I had to actually drop off my, um, I had to drop off my my six year old yesterday, and if if her stepsister was not out of town in um, where is it Arkansas, we would have had four. But yeah, it's crazy. The wife works uh, overnight at the hospital, and I actually just as of as of this coming up week, um, going back to doing what I do or what I did before with the transportation collection. So, um, I started up a, a, it's a, so, so hauling freight, 18 wheelers, um, big industry right there, especially right now. Um, you know, there's, there's trucks always in transit dropping off freight. Um, there's a lot of fraudulent brokers out there. Um, it's, it's double brokering scams that, you know, they're fly by night, they'll pop up and, um, solicit business and, then they'll shut down, close the doors, and take you know take off with the money that's owed to the carriers that you know hauls the freight. And we know um, we basically we pursue the the customers when we can't get it from the actual broker. Um, it's something that I learned actually how to do from somebody that had done it a while, and I helped start a business back in 2018 that I was forced out of exactly a year later. Um, and, you know, he is 
forced every one of his sales employees out that came on after that and basically kept their commissions, turned them into house accounts. So that's that's a different problem for a different day right there. Yeah, you know, they all come in different shapes and I always do. Look, I, you know, I, I reached well, out to I David. Your, yeah. Yeah, I got your message. And he, he asked me about it too. But uh, there's, there's two things from an attorney standpoint uh, that I think about. Number one is, do we have any involved in the process? And I don't believe we do in terms of, you know, looking at elections or the things that are going wrong with the elections, fraud or discounting ballots or anything like that. Okay, but I guess my biggest my biggest issue, my 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 argument on that is, what do you do when you've reached out to the proper authorities, the proper agencies, and um, that that cry for help goes unanswered? When I've I mean I've uncovered um, Department of Justice involvement in this thing, so I mean they're directly implicated. The FBI is directly but, implicated, yeah. but it all started your, with me in issue, Lafayette County. Yeah, your issue is the proper forum. So, depending on what the nature of the issue is, you could go to the state's office. Uh, I've, I've, do, I've, I've, I've done, I've done, I've done all that. I've reached out to the Secretary of State, the okay. Attorney General. I mean, yeah, I've, so here's, here's my explanation. If, if you think it's with DOJ, it's not a federal thing, for example, then. Avenues typically be in federal court. Again, it just depends on what the nature of the issue is. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if it's with the FBI, I mean, they're, they're different. They're different uh, avenues administratively. You know, like, for example, I represented a guy who was an ex U.S. Marshal, and he had issues with the Department of Justice and Marshal Service. All right. So we had to pursue um, administratively and complaints that we had about how the Marshal Service operated. But I couldn't go directly to the federal court first. No, and I. I understand. My thing is, is, I, I, I believe, I believe if there's an emergency situation, and that's exactly what you know, um, that's that's the one time where I believe. The law actually supports it. And, you know, if I'm if I'm seeking something such as an emergency injunction, an emergency stay, and that's ultimately what I what I see this coming down to is I'm going to have to I'm going to have to file in district court um, seeking a, a emergency order of protection and emergency stay to the upcoming election uh, until a fair and and formal and impartial. Um, investigation has taken place because up to now I've reached out to everybody that is tasked under the duties of their office with with you know doing something about this and when the attorney general the state attorney general's office has refused to even so much as look into the the facts um, to even you know do an investigation same thing with the Mississippi Bureau of Investigations. Obviously, the FBI has admitted to um, not being able to locate, mishandling a, a, a record, a document. Um, the U.S. Attorney's and, Office. And you're talking about a municipal election, right? Yes. Yeah. I think that my, my position is my position is she's refused to even, and I know that she has that right um, to, to remain silent. But I think in a a public position like this. Um, where, where you're accountable to the public when there's this serious of accusations where the facts actually substantiate it and back it up as far as the time frame on everything and how they had kicked everything off with a emergency injunction placed against me just days prior um, to, to effectively silence me, to keep me from City Hall to speak. I was on the docket to speak out after Joey East. Joey East actually introduced during that, that meeting, I found out, you know, the, the uh, changes to the ordinance on the, um, on, on the gun policies. And they, they effectively used all that to silence me and to get me out of the way for her election, so I wasn't a headache, a ro- you know, a, a road bump. And then also, it co- coincidentally, exactly seven days after she was sworn into office, I was, you know, forced, basically coerced under 
the most extreme stress. See, my, my thing is, my, my thing is this. Lafayette County has refused to afford due process rights to the accused. And, and I say that with confidence because it's very specifically lays out in its Mississippi rules of criminal procedure, the process for um, bond being set for a preliminary hearing to be set within 14 days. And I was trying to assert my innocence. Yeah, now, you're, now you're talking something outside of the election. Right? No, I'm, this is all interrelated i mean it's and that's the thing is is it's this this thing's going to be you know if i have to file this thing before the election it's going to be a massive filing because it's all interconnected now i have jay chain it's like there it's like a, a game of tit for tat um compared to 2017 now we have jay chain and lafayette county justice court going on tilt which is what it is i've i've shown through the camera and slowing it down extreme misconduct with the December 28th arrest. Um, actually, eight deputies searching my car in a matter of 25 minutes before my car was towed away. And they actually, it might, I'm of the standing of that was that car was being towed away. There's ongoing legal matters going on and eight deputies were in my car. And I have pictures of, of you know, pictures being taken of the hard drives. I see a swap happen between Deputy Omar Ahmed and Deputy, um, uh, what's his name? Right there at the back of my car. Um, I had two cell phones. You can see Courtney Dixon actually throw my cell phone at the ground. It bounces off the ground. The back camera glass is, is cracked. Um, you know, it's just, and then, and then this DUI, I, no, not one single bit of protocol was followed with it. I was never searched. I was, it was a non-consented transport to the Lafayette County Detention Center to take a field sobriety test, all because he smelled the odor of marijuana in my car and, uh, and didn't find any on me, didn't, didn't even do a, a search of me or the car. And I have an eyewitness to it. And, and I passed every part of the field sobriety test except for supporting my weight on my bad motorcycle knee, you know, which I showed and conveyed up front. And it's like, you know, my ex, the, the, the harassing phone calls claim that she put against me last February, that was false, completely false. There's exculpatory evidence of my innocence right there. And Lafayette County prosecutor Jay Chain is refusing to drop, to drop that, even though it's part of a um, we had a settlement in Chancery Court, and she even sent an email to Jay Chain saying, "Look, I want it. Uh, I want it thrown out." I mean, I've done a motion for discovery against Jay Chain on on all these open cases. I've yet to receive, you know, anything. They expect me to show up to, to trial at the end of this month. When, I mean, basically Lafayette County is saying, you know, giving putting the middle finger up, just giving me the big screw you. Well, let me uh, let me tell you this about. But my thing is, I'm asking for just a simple Zoom meeting. I, I, I don't like the fact that I don't like the fact that the county and the state is picking and choosing what statutes and what what provisions to to stick to and enforce. Where you know others, I mean, it's, it's like only the things advantageous to them. It's choosing to to quote and and enforce. Yeah, the best Zoom meeting, you know, which is the best spot, you'd, you'd be in violation of the other meeting. Yeah. But y'all are in, but y'all are in violation of much serious, much more serious things, and 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 just not getting the preliminary hearing. I had to. It, there's no there's no leniency there. It it specifically says must be released on on own personal recognizance within 14 days. If if the the preliminary hearing is not given within 14 days. I mean, it couldn't be clear. The only reason why I fled out was because they unconstitutionally held me kidnapped at the Lafayette County Detention Center and brainwashed me for six weeks well, from that. The court, as you know, operate under a different set of rules. You have to so, you know, the judge got your case or you're going to file a case they operate under rules where they can have a hearing the same day or the next day. That's not an issue. But for us, it's definitely, definitely different. So we're, we're, we're not able to have meetings by you or otherwise. Um, 
But I mean, what about the first? I just I, I have serious issues with like how does that how does that that not directly clash with what the First Amendment says the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances and you know how that's directly linked with me standing on the square holding the state flag. I mean, I was petitioning about Robin taking the flag down, you know, being being the major part over here for having the flag taken yeah. down um, without it being changed. And, I mean... But, but, I think, but I think the whole reason of emergency and, and the fact that the election is on the 8th certainly should give the county, if they... If they I would think that it would certainly mitigate in, in, a, in an adverse decision, it would mitigate the damages for the county to simply just grant me that. And to show a little bit of care and decency. Yeah, well, having a hearing can't do it for less than five days. Even if you could do it before that, you might like more evidence that you have no jurisdiction to work out before the new election. Well, I know, but but it's Lafayette County, Lafayette County Sheriff's Department, and I mean Lafayette County judges played a substantial part to the fraud that happened. Well, I, I, and I know judges, for example, um, they Well, and you also have Jay Chain. You have the you have the more recent arrest here that, you know, quite frankly, I can pick apart and destroy on, on just the facts alone. You know, and I mean, it's, it's I mean, I It, yeah, I mean, I have, I have something. I'm, I'm going to file it in the U.S. District Court. It's it, that's that's where it belongs, as it belongs in federal court at this point. I don't, I don't trust the state courts, um, but you know, I, I'm just trying to see if I can compel at least a little bit of cooperation here. Right. I'm, I'm asking your I'm asking your board I'm asking for local government members to um, for me like I, I'm literally and, and I know that, that this is this has been the county's goal for me to, to be fighting this monumental battle alone with no attorney in my corner but you know that's the unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in is that I'm, I'm having to do this alone I'm in the court of appeals right now. I've already filed a federal lawsuit against Olive Branch, which I had to just let go by the wayside, but it wasn't dismissed with prejudice, so I'm, it's, it's more than likely going to get refiled. I just didn't have the time to, to devote to it. And then we have the county continuing to go on tilt, wanting me to stand trial for, for things that it knows that it has nothing on and it's not cooperating on, on discovery motion. So uh, I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know... I don't know what part of, you know, equal protections of the laws being afforded, how that doesn't directly, you know, what all has gone on is, is exactly the definition of 42 U.S. Code 1985, the, the conspiracy to deprive another of their civil rights. And, you know, and then the successful deprivation and continued deprivation. It's, there's, there couldn't be a more matched up scenario than what, than, than what this thing is. I want the board supervisors to give me some accountability and some assurance that as elected officials in the county, where this all stemmed, that they are going to do their due diligence and getting to the bottom of the facts. And I understand that it belongs in court, but you know what? There needs to be somebody that's, that is interested in, in true justice, you know, and, and not an innocent Marine Corps veteran having his life destroyed. Do you, do you realize I can't even get an apartment anywhere because I have the, the fake tag of stalker on me. I am, I am immediately prejudged because of something that I didn't do and something that in order for me to get my freedom, 
to support my daughter and try to get her out of the court system, I had to do. I wish, I wish like hell, somebody in the Board of Supervisors, the same thing would happen to them so they could see exactly how it feels to have their whole life destroyed. You know, the, I had everything going, and my life was destroyed. Have you have you listened to that thing? Have you listened to that video that I that ten minute thing that I just released for Memorial Day, uh, in in advance of the the uh, July Fourth? Well, it, it's it's a reading from the Declaration of Independence, and you know it's 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 ironically it just it sends goosebumps up my spine whenever I you know whenever I read about the 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 King of Great Britain and and about you know the just a complete overrunning of the citizens of, of, you know, the colonies of America. And when I, on most of them, when I take he out, where I say he, and I replace it with she, with Robin, basically, it's amazing how the picture just, just frames itself crystal clear. And I think the message of the, the lifeguard standing by watching a child drown, I cannot wait to give that compassionate story to a jury because that's ultimately what's happened here is there's been a ton of culpable negligence. Agencies that should have done something should not have been a part of the problem that stood around and watched, watched me drown like they were a lifeguard watching a child drown. And the onlooker is too far away to do anything to help. I appreciate it, David. My my big thing right now, I mean, plausible deniability can't be asserted at this point. I've that's one thing I've made sure of is to is is to completely note, you know, uh, everybody that I've reached out to with this major problem, and you know, that's I hope that that. You know, somebody decides to do the right thing um, because certainly, you know, I didn't know about it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna fly. Sounds good. Thank you, David.